Hello and welcome along to the latest edition of Betting Weekly Game Bet Match, the tennis betting podcast brought to you in association with Bet Rivers, your hometown sportsbook. I'm Nigel Seeley, I'm your host, and I'm delighted to say joining me is our senior ATP Tour handicapper. It's Sean Calvert. Sean, good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. How are you doing? All right, not bad. Took yeah. the dog for a walk. Watched a bit of tennis. It rained off, got a bit bored. Lost some money on the tennis. I wish mine had been rained off. I know. There's, there's no rain in Marrakesh, unfortunately. I had to suffer through two consecutive matches. I had two screens on at the same time watching two matches. Both lost. Uh, so, so I've not had a particularly great day either. Muller got absolutely bet so heavily, didn't he? Mm. 1.9 into about 1.6. Went one from ten on breakpoint chances, and I, I can remember every single one of those breakpoint chances that he didn't take. I bet you can. Um, and Mute, if anyone didn't watch Mute, he was he was one point one six in play after the first set. Got really annoyed about one particular call. He, he does this a lot, Mute. Just one thing can set him off, and he doesn't forget it. And he went on and on and on about it the whole match. He ended up smashing about five or six rackets. Got a point penalty in the end. He just chucked his racket over the fence. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. That's the sort of day I've had. Well, some people get, you know, you're one of these people who knows every point, you watch everything, you write, you watch every single match. Some betters don't. I don't, I actually don't because I... I, 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 I don't of... watch a lot of them. Today I did because I was here and they were on and, you know, I wanted to watch them. But yeah, I, I prefer not to, but on this occasion I did. So, but you know, from strategy, you know, people will be watching this or listening to this and they're thinking to themselves, well, okay, the guys have bet something at minus 110 that's gone off at minus... What is it? Minus one sixty, one something like that. Uh, you know, my long term strategy is if, if we're doing those kind of things, we're going to win. You know, I, I don't. Oh, I yeah. don't really worry about it. I mean, yeah, I'm not worried about it. It's just frustrating when you're watching it, watching a guy say like, fail on nine out of ten breakpoint chances, and it, if you watch it, it winds you up, doesn't it? And that's that's the problem. So I try try not to watch it as much as I as possible but you can't help it can you attempt it you go you just turn it turn it off and then you think oh he's, he might be doing all right now and you sort of turn it back on and it can be a frustrating experience but as you say you know if you're betting at the right prices you know it's not ultimately you'll win won't you that's that's yeah that's the long and short of it we you know we beat the closing line there by by a long chalk and um you know th there we are but but uh, there is some kind of sort of, I watch these matches and I think to myself, well, I'm on it now. I'm watching the television and all of a sudden, I think I've said this to you before, when I turn over, the guy has an absolute disaster of patch of the match and I turn back and he, he breaks him back straight away. So I, I don't really, I don't even watch it. And I, I just think, I think sometimes, you know, people get too involved. I think sometimes when you watch too much. I did more, today. There was, there was all sorts of language coming out of this room today. I can tell you that. Well, that was Lagan. You 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 were, you were out doing the gardening. All he stars. He, he wasn't. He probably was using that sort of language, but not not here. Yeah. Just somewhere else. But I do think sometimes we we spend too much energy watching these things and going through these. I mean, like I said, yeah. when I was when I was betting quite heavily, I had and I've said this before. I had a big full head head of hair, and I did. And now I've got no hair. Did you? I, I honestly did. I I will post <laughs> a picture. I will post a picture on Twitter or on Instagram um, on the because we win site with me three betting days and I had a big long hair I was like something from the Happy Mondays if you've never seen the Happy Mondays Google the Happy Mondays I was into like sort of the I Manchester used to have a ponytail as well long hair all that sort of I know people aren't going to believe that but have you, have, was, you got picture, the... have you got a picture of you on the ponytail I should have yeah should have something dig one out dig one out let's have a look at sort of retro kind of uh, it would have been sort Calvert of about days. 1991 92 that sort of era when I you know when I had quite long hair I know people aren't going to believe it but that that's that's true yeah I had hair all the way down to my sort of... Did you? Yeah, honestly, I had a really, really Why? long hair. Because I was into that sort of like sort of grungy kind of scene at the time. The old, oh, yeah. I, can, I, I, need music. To, I need to see these. We all need to see these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I don't think I've got one that bad. My mum my mum will have one, but I've, I've, got, I've definitely got one where I've got like... I look like something from a boy band, believe it or not. Very, a, a I'm not band. saying anything. Yeah, well, we'll see. I, I will post it. I'll, I'll, I'll find my dig one out and post it. Anyway, enough about the uh, the retro when we had hair and stuff like that. But what I'm trying to say is that, like, sometimes when you watch too much sport, you you suddenly physically become involved and you, you lose so much of you know. You do you need go through to so many emotions, and sometimes yeah, definitely. it's quite nice to just go out for the day, take the dog for a walk, yeah, definitely, and, and see what's going on. And that's hundred percent where yeah. I am anyway. Okay, let's move on to today. Uh, Estoril washout. Absolute washout today. Weather looks a little bit more better or less. tomorrow, though, doesn't it? 
It does. Are you going to be there? What? You'll get there tomorrow night, will you, or something? No, we're going early. Uh, first flight out of Heathrow, seven o'clock in the morning. All oh, right. Okay. We'll be there by by ten. But we're actually going to the tennis on Thursday, which is, looks quite nice. We're there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the weather looks okay actually. Yeah, I mean, it's it was supposed to be all right today. I mean, we only got three ma- three matches, three games of 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 Korea, didn't we? Against Van der Zanska, well, obviously he lost all three of them. Um, and then it's, it, it it didn't look that bad the weather, but it was just it was just enough for it to be to be unplayable, I suppose. I don't know whether they'll put it on again later tonight or whatever, but um, yeah, pretty grim day at the minute. The thing is, did you notice the the money movement for that Panda Centric match? There was a lot of money for, um, and then it sort of flipped around towards the end. It, it went for Bottic Panda Centric early, then there come money for the other side, and then rightly off there was a lot of money for Bottic Panda Centric, and he got an early breaker. I just, I just maybe I, injury or something that someone knows yeah, about. I just, I just think some of these two fifty matches are a little bit like uh, when we talk about strategies on betting, a two fifty yeah. event, maybe we sh- or, or a five hundred event, whichever you you play. I mean, we sh- we should think probably a little bit more about the the times of volume you have to have on these, especially in the first round. But there, there was there was some op- very strange betting patterns on that Botic match. Well, yeah, I mean the Shevchenko match in Marrakesh as well. But Berrettini was bet very, very, very heavily, wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, Shevchenko went out to about two point seven five from from evens, which immediately, knowing who's involved, that 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 sets alarm bells ringing, doesn't it? And I watched that match; he didn't put any effort into that at all. It was, I know, Berrettini played pretty well, very well, but there was nothing from Shevchenko today. And we we highlighted that, didn't we? The bet, you know, if you looked at the naked yeah. eye, you looked you at mentioned it, it a few times. Yeah, yeah, I thought Shevchenko was a little bit, but I think sometimes in these two fifty events, we. You should probably a little bit, a little bit cautious in terms of the, what you do, is because the movement on on the odds is very much, very, very heavy, much more heavy than you would see in a, in a major or in a uh, in a, a thousand event. Okay, I, let's I move on. Heavily, and he lost. So Sorry? our guy was heavily bet and he lost. So yeah, well, yeah, it swings around about, isn't it? Swings around. But let's move along uh, to tomorrow. We have uh, a couple of matches to preview here in Estoril, and the first match is two tour veterans. There's two tour veterans chatting about the match, but there's two tour veterans actually playing the match uh, tomorrow. It's Richard Gasquet up against Dominic Team. Richard Gasquet going along about. He's with 38 years of age now, uh, up against Dominic Team, who's uh, he's, he's 37. He will, he will be 38 in in June. You've aged him by a couple of months, but yeah, yeah. But I always put I'm I'm, I'm 51 in June, but I always say I'm 51 because it's just, you know it's just fair easy. enough. Rounding it's it just up, easier, just rounding up. Uh, guess Richard Gasquet up against Dominic Team. Dominic Team is a favourite here at minus one seventy five. Richard Gasquet is plus one thirty eight. If you look at the spread, it's two and a half. Dominic Team giving up two and a half is minus one ten. Uh, Richard Gasquet receiving two and a half is minus one fifteen. If we look at the total, it's very high. It's twenty two and a half. Uh, minus one seventeen for under. Minus one oh nine for over the head to head they played a lot of times together it's three wins apiece uh but you have to go back to two, 2023 the last time they met in monte carlo dominic team won six one six four on the clay and that was the only time they met on clay but a lot of those matches to the first time they met it was in 2015 pretty much irrelevant their clay form this series this season is pretty identical richard gasquet is three wins and three losses and uh dominic team is two wins and two losses um how do you pick the bones out of this one? I think this is quite a tricky little match to start with. I'm quite keen on Dominic Team here. Um, he's talked in, in recent days uh, about his wrist. He said, I'm going to quote him here, he said, even though my wrist isn't 100%, every win feels incredibly beautiful and meaningful. I have to listen to the body, so I cut down the intensity of practice. He went on to, to elaborate about how his wrist, since that really bad injury that he had, which he's never been able to come back from. You know, I've, I said many times on this show, this this Dominic team comeback isn't it isn't happening, and it, I don't think it can happen because it's, this wrist of his is 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 a virtually a career ending injury for him. It's not it's not technically ended his career, but it's it's highly unlikely that he's ever going to get back to his 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 previous levels because he he physically can't do it with this wrist that keeps plaguing him. Sometimes he's okay, sometimes he's not so okay. Um, but you should be beating Richard Gasquet on clay at this stage of Gasquet's career. I mean, Gasquet was the luckiest of lucky losers, wasn't he? He got beat by Luca Puy um, in qualies. Looked extremely tired. He kept talking to his coach, saying, "I'm done. I'm done." I don't know whether that was in French or or English, but les doom, the, les doom. <laughs> it could have been. My <laughs> French isn't great. Spanish is all right, but French not not. No, so Fr- much. I can do the Spanish. Que doom, que doom. Yeah, que, yeah, that's, doom, that's, doom. that's not that's not technically correct. But let's, Portuguese let's, is. <laughs> Let's move on from there. <laughs> Whatever he said, he said he's done. Um, 
and he got lucky because Davidovich Fakina pulled out of the tournament with a tooth infection, um, of all things. So you've Gasquet, had one of you've had a few in him. I, I, not an infection, but a problem with the crown. Yeah, I had to go about four or five times tonight. It's all right now at the minute. Touch, touch for Mica. Um, so Gasquet took his place in the in the draw and and, and inherited Davidovich's buy. So he's gone from losing in the in the qualies to playing in the second round without doing anything. But if we look at the last twelve months on clay at main level, Gasquet twenty percent win rate. And a service points, one hundred ten points, one total of 97. A service hold and break total of 98. Very mediocre stats. Dominic team, 62% win rate. 101 service points, one hundred ten points, one total. And 103 in his whole break total. So considerably better stats from the team. And you would expect that. At this stage of his career, Gasquet needs a quick surface. I remember watching him in Marrakesh this time last year. I think it was against the aforementioned Alexandra Muller. He, he just, it was heavy that day as well. The, the slower it is, the worse it is for Gasquet. He, he just hasn't got the legs anymore to to really chase all these balls down. He, the, the, the power differential is quite key in this one as well. Team's got a lot more power, even with this dodgy wrist. If you look at that match, the only match in their head to head that is really relevant, which was a year ago, I think it was in Monte Carlo on the clay. Team's heavier weight a shot that day in slow conditions was the, the key difference. And his, his better pop on serve, 87% on first serve. Um, Dominic team won that day compared to 62% for Gasquet. So assuming team's wrist is all right, I'm pretty confident that team is is the likely winner of this one. I haven't got the current odds in front of me, but minus two and a half or minus three and a half games on the handicap is, is something that might interest me there. Minus two and a half games in the handicap is minus 110. Dominic team on the money line is minus 175. You might want to put it in a parlay. Dominic team, I thought Dominic team was a big price to win the tournament. 40 to one, I mentioned it. You know, it, it you did. Be- I just thought it was a big, big price. But anyway, uh, whether he's got think the he, legs to go deep, I don't I think know. it's his wrist. I just think he, he can't do what he wants to do anymore. He, he can in, in flashes and spells, but I don't know whether I'd, I'd expect him to go the whole way and, and, and win a tournament. It's possible, of course, but you know, it depends how his wrist is. Yeah, minus 175. The bet for Sean is a lean. Is it lean, Sean, the official bit? Yeah, I, I want to back him, but I'm, I'm concerned about this wrist, but... I, if I was betting this one, I would certainly be involved in team either to win it or on the handicap, minus two and a half, minus three and a half, something like that. I think he should win this one reasonably comfortably. Yeah, if you go to the Bet Rivers website, minus two and a half is plus uh, minus one ten. If we look at three and a half, uh, I'm trying to find the three and a half. Uh, we can go four and a half. It's plus plus two ten. I can't I can't find the the three and a half anyway. But you'll find it on the Bet Rivers website. It would be I'm, probably about two point. To 2.3, yeah. something like that, I think. Yeah. So plus, prob- certainly plus money anyway, that's for yeah. sure. Minus one, uh, minus two and a half, minus 110, minus four and a half, plus 210, three and a half, probably about plus 110. Head across there, there is 29 different markets available on the Dominic team. Uh, Richard Gasquet match in Estoril tomorrow. Hopefully we get some good weather tomorrow. The weather forecast is good. There's no yeah. rain tomorrow, uh, Thursday and Friday. Okay. So we should be okay with the weather in Estoril. And the action starts that match at 5 a.m. It's a very, very early start. Eastern is that on? Um, it's not in the schedule, to be honest. Is that the first yeah. one? Well, we haven't got the the schedule, but the the order of play starts at five a.m. So it's five a.m. tomorrow morning. Yeah, well, um, they've got a backlog, haven't they? I think this will probably be a bit later, but we'll see. Yeah. So uh, the first match five a.m. Make sure you get the bets on early. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Get them in early. Don't wait. Don't leave it too late because Dominic team could be in action late, but he could be in action early. Okay, the another match we are going to speak about in this tournament in Estoril over in Portugal is our tournament pick, Lorenzo Massetti. Um, we were both very, very confident about Massetti. He's up against a tough opponent, though, here, Nuno Borges. Um, the local player is playing, he's had a, he's having a brilliant year. Uh, Massetti is minus 195. You would expect him to win this. Borges is plus 155, but the spread here is one and a half. Massetti giving up one and a half is minus 162. Borges receiving one and a half is plus 125. And again, the total here is 22 and a half with under the favourite at minus 125. Uh, if you look at the head-to-head, it's not much to see because they've never played each other before. But um, Massetti, we mentioned him in the, the show yesterday or on Sunday, whenever it was, I can't remember. Sunday, I yep. I don't, it, I don't know what it's bank holiday. It's, where where it's I am. Where slightly I am. confusing, but Sunday, yeah. Well, we spoke about him. We were very glowing with our, uh, our talk about Massetti. He, this is a tough match, though. I think he, I think this is probably one of his most difficult matches. Uh, Borges obviously is a player that's uh, improving and a good year, and obviously with the local support, I think this is a, this is a difficult little match. But I am confident about our outright pick. But I am slightly concerned about this match. Should I should I be worried? No, okay. uh, I think Good. I think that's, Massetti that's will win this. 
I think Brilliant. that's who was. I watched all of Borges yesterday against Luca Puy, and he was he was so bad. Borges. I mean, he, he's always a nervous starter. I think I backed him at this tournament last year, um, and he lost in straight sets to Quentin Alice as a minus one fifty favorite. Yesterday, he was a point away from losing in straight sets again to another Frenchman, Luca Puy, as a minus two one seven chance. He's so nervy here. A lot, a lot, pretty much. I say a lot. Pretty much all the Portuguese players that I've ever seen play here. Are very very nervous. I don't know whether it's because it's the only tournament Portugal has, you know, the only chance they have really, other than Davis Cup to kind of play on their home soil, so to speak. But um, he was dreadful. He, he he gets so nervous. He was he got bageled in the first set by Luca Pui, who didn't even have to do that much. Um, then he had to save a match point to avoid, as I said, going out in straight sets. But the thing that he did, he obviously relaxed once he got into it in set two. Um, but the, the thing that let Luca Pui down is the thing that always lets Luca Pui down, which is his first serve percentage. You know, he, he's had, had so many problems over the years, Pui, with it, that first serve percentage. It, it dropped to about, from about 50, which isn't great, to about 30 in the final set. And that, that did allow Borges to grab the win. Um, that said, he might find this a better set of circumstances for him because there's no pressure on him as, as underdog against Massetti. It could be a, a nicer situation. You know, the crowd behind him not really expecting him to win. They were expecting him to beat Halis. They were expecting him to beat Puy. I don't think they'll expect him to beat Massetti, but, you know, he, he's he's a slow start. He's a nervous start. Let's see how he does again against uh, against Massetti. Last 12 months at main level on clay, very heavily towards Massetti in favour of statistics. Borges, 44% win rate and a service points, one in return points, one total of 98, which is one point better than Gasquet. Um, and a service hold and break total of just 93, which is not even as good as Richard Gasquet. Now, let's compare that with Lorenzo Massetti. 65% win rate, service points, one and return points, one total of 106, service hold and break total of 112. Um, much of that differential comes on Massetti winning much more return points. Borges doesn't, doesn't return that well on the clay. Um, Massetti won 7% more return points and he breaks serve 14% more often than Borges does on this surface. So t- statistically, it's all very much in favour of Massetti. The odds, I think, are as close as they are because it's Massetti's first match on clay since last summer. But I took the opportunity to take a look at what Massetti has done in his opening match on clay at main level of the year. And he's won all four that he's played. Um, opening match of the year on clay, main level, won every one for the last four years. He was playing a lower level before that. So no uh, no obvious problem with Massetti transitioning to clay. Um, so, yeah, Massetti here for me. I, I'm kind of a little bit surprised that the odds are quite as close as they are. Um, yeah, Massetti. So, Massetti, you, you quite... It's very unlike you to be so confident on two heavy minus money favourites. So... The Massetti. I'm not saying I'd back him at that price. I'm just saying. No, Massetti. But the, the Massetti and Dominic team parlay plays plus mm. one forty. I would so expect he, them both to win. Yeah. Would, would, would you? You wouldn't put anyone off that. If they wanted I wouldn't to put anyone off parlay. that. I, I I do expect them both to win. Um. Obviously, I I hope Massetti is going to win. I, I just I'm not sure that Borges is is in this class. The only way I think that Borges can win this is if Massetti is extremely rusty on the clay, which, as I said, he's in previous years he hasn't been. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't put anybody off back in the, the parlay of those two. They're both statistically, they, they they both should have a reasonably good day. They should both win anyway. So where's the angle? What's what, what's what's the what's the bet here? How do we get with him? Yeah, so the the league, if I'm back in Massetti, I haven't seen all the odds, but I would be tempted on on the handicap again. Minus what two and a half? Minus no, three. one and a half. One and a half is a heavy favourite. It's minus one sixty two. Okay, so what's two and a half or three? And uh, two and a half is. <laughs> Oh, I can't find it in the moment. Hold on one second. I need well, to. These are the only four matches that we have odds for that we can talk about. So we <laughs> these these are chosen for us in a way. It's not necessarily that I've chosen these for, for their their great betting angles, but uh, Massetti in two 0 is also a slightly riskier option given that it's he's coming back um, from the hard. But he has won his opening match on class. I say mainly in straight sets. Um, um, I, I, I would ex- I would expect him to win this. Two nil Massetti is available at plus one twenty three, and minus two and a half for Massetti is minus one ten. Yeah, minus two and a half would be would be reasonable. If you look at these bare statistics, he's miles ahead of, of Borges. So, if you're a Borges 
back here all fine. Yeah, hoping that Massetti has a bad day and Paul Chess plays a, an awful lot better than he did against uh, Luca Puy and Quentin Hallis here last year. Yep. So two favourites in Estoril, weather permitting. Hopefully you'll be. I'll be there tomorrow. You can follow my action. You and can my cheer day. on Massetti. Yeah, I've got, well, I don't want to be at the tennis tomorrow. I'll be at the. Um, I'll be. I'll be at the tennis on Thursday. This may well be Thursday. It's just that this is the only match. The only two matches set for for now. Yeah. Hopefully we will be there. We will, uh, don't you worry about that. If I'm there, I will be cheering him on, and I'll <laughs> okay. be doing everything I can because I've bet him to win the tournament. So I'll, I'll be definitely cheering him on. Uh, so Mazzetti and Dominic team in Estoril, the double plays, the parlay plays plus 140. You can follow the adventures of myself. And I'm going out with Lord Oakwell. Uh, Simon Holden will be in uh, Portugal tomorrow. You can see all our trips there at the tennis on our socials at Because We Win on Twitter and on Instagram. Okay, there's another couple of tournaments. There's a tournament in Marrakesh. We can't talk about any matches there because we don't know anything yet. We're recording this now about quarter past five over in the UK, which is um, 12.15 over Eastern time. And we don't really know the a action tomorrow, but check the Bet Rivers website out. They have a full host of bets on there. So we've got two matches we are going to concentrate over in Houston on the clay over in Houston. Uh, if you never watch a show on Sunday, just give us a little bit, a little bit of background about the clay at Houston. It's, it's not as slow as the European clay by any means in imagination. Yeah, it's a different type. It's an, it's an American fast dry clay, um, which is, it's different to European clay in the sense that it's laid on top of a hard surface. Uh, some players can find it slippery. Some players have complained about that. Um, it's normally quicker because it is laid on top of that sort of hard surface. It, it was also very quick in the past for, for a couple of reasons. One, they used to use the Wilson US Open balls there, which are very light, um, quick balls. The other reason is that a lot of American players like like Isner and Apelka and all these guys, they used to play it. So that is immediately going to bump up the, the statistics in terms of first serve points, one aces and uh, service holds and all that stuff. But it's, it's quicker than your general European clay. And the, and the weather um, in Houston at the minute is, is quite good as opposed to last year, which was a washout. I think it's supposed to be 26 degrees and sunny on Wednesday. And also I think Thursday and Friday are supposed to be pretty hot and sunny as well. So when you're playing on clay, generally if, if, it, if the court's been baked a bit by the sun, it, it generally plays a bit quicker. The balls will fly uh, through the air a little bit quicker. So um, it, it's a tournament that features, generally speaking, more tie breaks uh, than the other clay tournaments, even though some it, it actually rivals some of the clay tournaments that are played at altitude. This is sea level, Houston, um, but it features a similar amount of holes, first third points, one and tie breaks to, to tournaments that are played at, um, at altitude. And that's going to be good news to the number one seed, uh, ben Shelton, who's in action against Zizou Bergs, uh, the Belgian. Bel ben Shelton is minus 335 and a very, very heavy favourite. Bergs is plus 240. The spread here is two and a half. Shelton giving up two and a half, minus 175, plus 125 for Bergs. And the total is minus 110, the pair at 22 and a half. Before we go on to the match, did you see the video of um, Bergs when they asked the question? No. They asked him about um, what what is what, what does he think of clay uh, okay. in, in the surface? And he gave a, a, a two-minute interview about a physio called Clay. It's quite funny. You might you have to look at about it. He said Clay's a really good guy. He's a great guy. And then, who was he talking about? It was called about some physio called Clay. There's, there's Why would physio... an interviewer be asking him about that? Well, they were asking him about clay in, in the surface. How he, no, I mean, how, would he how, think that? Why would he think he, they're asking about? I don't his know. But he, he, he gave uh, his answer was all about old oh, clay's really good. Yeah, he looks after my. And then we said no, no, no. And they had to cut an interview and said, oh no, it's uh, we're on about the surface. And this was guy he, called Clay was just standing there. Going like this. Was it was it in a different language to his own? Is that why he got confused? Well, he was in, he was, but he speaks he speaks better English than me, to be honest with you. So he, uh, he I've has, not heard him speak. I don't think Zizou, but I don't think I've ever heard him say anything. So I'm not sure. If you if you if you can get onto uh, YouTube or you can go onto Twitter, look for the Clay interview with Zizou Bugs. It's quite funny actually. Oh, I haven't uh, seen that. I'll have a look at but that. but he's an underdog. Two forty. Give him a chance here. His conditions going to suit here, uh, Ben Shell, aren't they? Uh, I think he's got a reasonable chance. He could certainly test him at least for a while. It's not like Shelton's in particularly great form at the minute. Two attacking players, these two, who should be very strong on serve in these conditions that I just talked about, perhaps not so good on return. Um, Bergs has won 73% of his first serve points at main level in his last 10 matches. That goes back over a year. And Shelton's won 75% of his first serve points at main level in the last 12 months. So we all know Shelton's big server wins a lot of first serve points. Bergs wins almost as many at this level, just 2% fewer. Both men only win 34% of return points at this level. 
So in the quick clay conditions where 72% of first serve points are won on average in Houston and the fact that it's Shelton's first clay match since, you know, the French Open last year, uh, a tight first set feels like a, a decent play here. Um, Berg's has already played a match. He played yesterday against Patrick Kipson. And both of those guys, Berg's and Kipson, won 78% on their first serves. And there was only one break of serve in the match. Looking further at what Berg's has done against the better opposition so far in his career, he's played three matches as Berg's against top 20 opponents. And all three of those openings, of the opening sets of those matches, have gone to exactly 12 games. And that was against Rublev, Kashanov, and Sitsipas. So for me, the obvious play here is is over 10 and a half games in set one. I, I couldn't see the odds on this earlier. I think it was around about two to one when I looked earlier on. Um, over 10 and a half games, I think that's that's the way to go. We, we're a bit struggling with some of the lines at the minute. We haven't got them all, but um, that's that's my bet here. Yeah, over two and a half games, two to one, around about that plus 200. But you have to check the Bet Rivers website out. This match doesn't start, or, or the matches don't start till 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, Eastern time. So there's lots of time to it head across. It could be a good 24 hours, couldn't it? Yeah, so you, 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 you've you got lots of time there. But we're leaning towards the over t- 10 and a half, looking for the first set to be a long set. Shelter matches are ridiculously uh, long. And hopefully that uh, Zizou Bose doesn't need clay. You know, the physio, doesn't he? Hopefully he plays well on clay and doesn't need the assistance of clay. But we think Indeed. that might, that one might be a, low, a little bit long. There isn't really markets available as of yet, but I'm sure nearer the time, over 30 different markets available on this match in Houston. Uh, the final match, uh, it's quite an interesting one for me. It's Nakashima against Hichikata. Uh, Nakashima's minus 235. Hichikata's plus 175. Two and a half is the spread. Nakashima's a minus 138 favourite, giving up two and a half. Uh, total though high, 23 and a half uh, over is minus 110 and under around about minus 120. Um, this one here, it, it looks, it, it when I looked at it, I thought straight away this could be a long match. And uh, the odds here suggest it could be a long match. 23 and a half is the line here. Never met each other before. Hitchcock to beat Christopher Eubanks in round one and Nakashima beat a qualifier. Um, what do you think here? Similar sort of way of thinking. Um mm-hmm. Nakashima was impressive in in his first clay match of the year against the Djokovic. Went unbroken, won seventy nine percent on first serve. Again, very good number on his first ball. Similarly, Hijikata was only broken once, um, and won seventy eight percent of his first serve points against, uh, admittedly, a, a weak returner in Eubanks. But Nakashima is not exactly a great returner either. Nakashima has been working with Mariano Puerta in recent months, so a lot of people will probably remember from the French Open final, I think it's 2005 he made the French Open final against against Nadal. So he's been working with him since last October, I think, Nakashima. So that, that should be of good use during the clay swing, assuming that Puerta doesn't give him any of his, uh, any of the substances that he got, he eventually got <laughs> banned for at least, I think it was twice Puerta got banned. Anyway, let's hope he's not going to be doing that. So he, and he, he did look well prepared, Nakashima. He, he was impressive in that first, certainly for a first clay match of the year. Should he be this short though against Hijikata? I'm not I'm not convinced. He's plenty short enough. Last 12 months at main level, all surfaces. Slight advantage to Nakashima, but not not hugely so. Service points one and return points, one total of a hundred. A service hold and break total. Sorry, service points one and return points, one total of 102, and a service hold and break total of a hundred. Uh Hijikata also has a service hold and break total of a hundred. And his service points one and return points, one total is ninety-nine over the last uh, 12 months on all services. So not, not a huge, great advantage for, for Nakashima. So you wouldn't make him, you'd make him favourite, but you wouldn't make him quite the short, or I wouldn't anyway. Nakashima is the more experienced man on clay at this level. He's played 14 matches, Nakashima, at this level. Uh, Hijikata has only played that one, which was against um, against Eubanks. But at all levels, they've played pretty much the same number of matches on clay. I think 37 and 38, respectively. So... I'm not sure about this price on Nakashima. I mean, he only breaks serve Nakashima 15% of the time at main level, playing 0.27 tie breaks per set. So in these conditions, if I was betting in this one, I certainly wouldn't back Nakashima at that price. I'd, I'd be leaning again towards my favourite with Nakashima, which is which is set one overs. Again, I don't think we've, we've got all the odds, all the lines for this yet, but it's. I imagine you'd probably get a slightly better price on this than you would about the... Um, 
about the other one. Uh, so what kind? What kind uh, of line were we looking at? Ten and a half, maybe over ten and a half. I should two ten. I should imagine it. Yeah, I would say something like that. Yeah, I haven't seen and the odds. Where bit, would but... be the cutoff line? One eighty five plus one eighty five or something like that. You'd want it. I think you'd want at least two to one right. for this. Um, so if you can get that, you might even get bigger than that. Okay. So I we're looking at the over the uh, ten and a half in set one in both matches in Houston, Shelton against Bergs, Hitchcock and Nakashima. We haven't got the lines yet, but we're predicting around about two to one plus two hundred. Um, if you can get bigger, great. But anything, anything around that line, that's where we want to be concentrating on in these two matches here. Obviously, like I said, we are recording this at a bad time. Um, the, the rain delay in Estrella with a backlog in tennis matches here. We've still got matches that we've actually predicted on, on Sunday show that haven't even started yet. So we, ha we, we have to do these matches now because of the time. But the lines will come up. You've got loads of time for them. At one o'clock Eastern time, as I say, in Houston, the matches start. So that is on Wednesday. So check the Bet Rivers website out there. And we're going to go for leaning towards over 10 and a half. Now, it's very hard for you, Sean, to actually say we've got an official bet or we haven't got an official bet because we don't really know much of the odds. But where are we? Yeah. Where, where where are we? Just all lean today, or are we are we we going to go from one official pick? Well, we can't really do the official pick because we haven't got the odds. Yeah. Um, we can we can say. I mean, I know what the odds are going to be roughly. Um, whether we can do that or not, I, I don't know. No, I but... think we leave it. I think what we do is we leave it. We leave it for day. We're going to go for. Yeah. It would be the Bergs, Shelton won the overs. I think on that. Yeah. Shelton say, Bergs it's... over ten and a half is 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 our pick, but. We, we can't really say because we don't really know what we price we else. should to record it. So uh, I'm going to go, we're going to go for 10 and a half. That will be an official pick if it was around about two to one. So if it comes up with those kind of prices, I would definitely, definitely take a bet on that. So Shelton Bergs over 10 and a half. Gasquet team uh, over in Estoril and Borges Musetti. We like the two favourites, plus 140 for the parlay. We're not putting you off that play. Hichigata Nakashima, again, over 10 and a half games is a lean, but we don't know the price. Anything around about two to one. That's it. That's it. That is it for today. Uh, remember, you can follow us on all our socials at Because We Win on Instagram and on Twitter. Follow that Instagram account. Lots of action going to be coming over the next few days. Myself and Simon Holden will be in Portugal, in Lisbon. We're going down to Estoril for the tennis. We've had the tennis on Thursday. We give you some updates from there. Uh, you can follow the action there on our Instagram page. You can also download the podcast, Benny Weekly Game Bet Match, on your preferred podcast provider. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Betting Weekly Studios. Any comments you have on there, please feel free. We'll answer everything you say. We've got any questions you want, anything you want answered, any questions you have for Sean and myself, we will give you a response, no problem whatsoever. Uh, Sean, thank you very much for your time. We're back again tomorrow. I'll land, I'll do a thank podcast you, yeah. tomorrow. I'll do a podcast tomorrow. <laughs> Hopefully we have some more tennis matches to talk about. Hopefully some more in-depth matches. Hopefully some more picks and hopefully less rain. That is what we're hoping for in Estoril. Uh, that's it for today. Enjoy your day. Good luck with your bets and we'll see you all again tomorrow. Take care.